Okay, so before we begin, shout out to Dominus TV and his girlfriend Katie for recommending this film to me. Why, you may wonder? Because I've always been a defender of Hayden Christensen. In the same way that I've been a defender of the Star Wars prequels. No, it doesn't work on a universal level, but there sure is something to it. No, I'm not trying to preach that I have the right opinion here, but it's just like, I always try and view things with a pretty positive attitude. But as soon as I saw the poster, I knew I was in for something special when it came to Little Italy. I mean, come on, look at this, just look at it. Doesn't that look like a film you want to watch? It was described to me as kind of like being Romeo and Juliet, but with rival pizzerias in New York City. And coming off of the bat of Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing, which again involves a pizzeria, it involves New York City, it involves rival family and friends going at it against each other. I was game for more like that. Is this the next Do the Right Thing? No, it's, I can't say that with a straight face. More like it's the next fucking horrible Hallmark Christmas special, except it doesn't take place at Christmas. But I tell you what, it's a superb, unintentional comedy, and I think people that really enjoyed The Room are gonna love this, and I really recommend that everybody see it. It's on Netflix, it's really easy to find. What can safely be said about Little Italy is that this is a film that is really, really trying. This film desperately wants you to like it. It wants you to understand it really easily, it wants to be a film for everyone. For starters, it's a rom-com. The rom-com genre, pretty hard to really get it wrong to be honest. Rom-coms are great because everyone can kind of relate to it in some form. Hey. Hey you, d d d don't take offense to that. Chin up, you'll get there someday, champ. Don't worry, you're a real looker. As well as that, films that revolve around a foreign culture tend to be quite interesting because there's a certain degree of insight there. There's stuff that we as an audience can learn. For example, the Pixar movie Coco. We learn a lot about the Day of the Dead and the Mexican tradition. It's a great time, you learn something from it. Concepts from other cultures often make for interesting movies. And I mean, Italian-American movies are usually a winner. I mean, look at Goodfellas. And it's all a feel-good movie. Sure, it's Romeo and Juliet, but it's Romeo and Juliet with a happy ending. And everyone's happy and cheery and there's lots of parties in this film and there's lots of pop music. So under any normal circumstance, this should be a pretty easy, pretty simple win. Decent little crowd pleaser. However, well that would be the case if they didn't fuck up absolutely everything. From the get-go, I knew that this wasn't going to be the easy viewing that we've come to expect from the rom-com genre. We're seeing the antics of these two playful children in Little Italy, and those are the two star-crossed lovers for the film. Don't ask me to remember their names because I don't. And they're playing pranks on an old man, and ugh, they're just, they're so mischievous. They're such free spirits, and to really add to that, the two main characters, the two lovers, Hayden Christensen and Emma Roberts, who you might know from American Horror Story and beating up Evan Peters, they are narrating the movie together while making googly eyes at each other and joking around with each other and it's fucking insufferable. Fortunately, they completely forget to do that about midway through the film. And they're both from rival families, but they've got an obvious connection between the two. Again, Romeo and Juliet and the different families on different pizzerias. One is famous for its great dough, the other is famous for its great sauce. One of the first jokes of the film is what they lead with, and this is also what they close out with, is what's in the sauce? Nunya. Oh, Nunya? Yeah, Nunya business. Oh yeah, that landed all right. Like the drone that I had for Christmas in 2016 that burst into flames, and to this day, my girlfriend still takes the piss out of me for it. Now, in this time, Emma Roberts has moved to England because she's training with a top British chef to open her own restaurant over in England. She says how scary this chef is, and it cuts to a joke where she's got two baguettes over a person's face. She's like, what are you? And then he's like, I am a moron sandwich. That's it, that's that's what you need. Meme comedy in the first act, that's, that's perfect. And again, with the delivery, it really does land. Like the flight I was supposed to take to Germany but Ryanair cancelled and didn't refund me for! Oh no, I got meatballs on my hoodie. I'd better go change. And speaking of meatballs, did I mention everybody in this film is Italian? Or at least they are supposed to be. What the fuck is this? Hayden Christensen rocks up covered in bronzer with his hair clearly dyed black. And his family are just about as stereotyped as it come and the same goes for Emma Roberts' family. Hey Tony, look, it's Uncle Polly! Hey, it's Uncle Polly! Have you been, Uncle Polly? Where's my sarsaparilla? How's Marie? Sarsaparilla! Now Emma Roberts has returned as an adult to visit her family, but she doesn't intend on staying, because her family are locked in a feud with Hayden Christensen's family, but they won't say why. Their fathers really hate each other, and their restaurants are great rivals. Oof, I really wonder why these two hate each other so much. Gosh, I really hope they can put their differences aside. Ooh. But will they though? But then there are other will they won't they questions because Emma Roberts appears to be a little bit taken by Hayden Christensen. But they're rival families, you don't understand. So there's this bar that they like that's owned by a Chinese fella who pretends he's Italian. Yeah, 
they got a cheeky bit of chemistry between the two. They got a cheeky bit of playful banter. They're kind of they're kind of rivals, but there's there's a love between the two of them. So they play a game of football, and whoever you know fails to make a goal, I don't know, they have to take a shot or something. I mean, I've noticed something about this film is the attitude towards alcohol in this film is that of a child who has never drunk alcohol before. There's a scene where the two fathers who are in the bitter rivalry are at this bar and they're gonna fight each other, and the Chinese bartender fella, he pulls out these Peronis, he's like, alright, you guys, it's like he's handing Peronis out like they're tequila. You know, he's like, oh, you're gonna get really wasted off of this. It's it's just one beer. Oh yeah, one 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 beer, That that's really gonna give you the fighting spirit, isn't it? Don't worry, you won't feel those bruises, you've just had a beer. So yeah, Emma Roberts wants to leave it all behind, she's had enough of this place, she's just coming back to visit her family, but she intends on staying in England. And while she is very much in love with Hayden Christensen, she's like, oh, but he's got another girlfriend who's a stewardess and she's got a love rival who appears in one scene and then is never seen again or mentioned again. Okie doke. So then she goes to this party thing with family, I don't know, and there's this guy there and he wants to sniff her feet, but then she has to go pee pee. And then she goes to cook a pizza with Hayden Christensen and they're all like taking advice from each other and they make the perfect pizza. It's just, mm, mamma mia. And there's a lot of stuff you can peel out of this movie. It gets quite repetitive with them making the pizzas together and discovering the same damn thing every time. They go together so well. They're like, they're like the perfect sauce and the perfect dough. And yeah, you can just peel scenes out of there because it's repetitive. It eventually leads to a sex scene at one point, but she realizes, nah, she's she's going. She, she's off. She's really got to commit to going to England. Why, Hayden Christensen asks, and she says, because clues in the name, Little Italy, it'll never change. I don't, I don't get how the name Little Italy suggests never changing, but... Okay, so a large theme in this film, aside from, you know, forbidden love, is tradition, legacies, loyalty. Both Emma and Hayden are expected to be loyal to their respective family, which makes their love a forbidden fruit. And they both just want their fathers to just fucking get over themselves, you know? Leave it in the past where it belongs. Their fathers are very stuck in their old ways. Now, what makes this incredibly, incredibly ironic is how tone-deaf and backwards this film is. There is a scene where Hayden Christensen gets sexually harassed by a police officer, sorry, a minority hunter. And it's full of these sexual innuendos and it's played up for laughs and it's like, ha ha ha, she's sexually harassing him. Gosh, isn't this funny? Ha! Oh yeah, did I also mention there's like a juxtaposition? There is an old couple, it's like the grandparents, and and they want to be with each other, but the, the lady, the old lady, swore she would never love another man again, and she's loyal to her old husband who died, but this other guy's just really pushing for it, and she slaps him, but he, can, he continues pushing for it, and then she agrees to marry him. And what's really cute about it is that while they're really old, they both really love Starbucks, because, you know, young people really love Starbucks. And then all the baby boomers in the audience are like, HA! Riveting satire on millennials! Sorry, just be right back, let me just go beat up my wife for a second. Because she didn't season the chicken right. Also then there's like, there's a scene where there's like a bit of a, a bit of a friction between Emma Roberts and Hayden Christensen, and he steps out of line and she slaps him. So Emma Roberts really is just playing Emma Roberts here. Yay, 2018 released movie where a woman slapping a man is not depicted as a disgusting act of domestic violence. What a progressive movie this truly is. But it is progressive because it features a black stereotype and a gay stereotype who both work at the airport security. But did I mention that it's really progressive because it has themes of identity? You see the Chinese fella wants to be Italian. He kind of puts up a front. But once the veil is peeled back, he can finally reveal that yes, he is indeed Chinese also gay. And while he and Hayden Christensen share a hug, he grabs his butt, which is... which is fair enough. Anyway, there's a great pizza cook-off going on, and Hayden Christensen and Emma Roberts are supposed to compete against each other, and they cook their rival pizzas, but they mix the sauce with his base, and uh, he gets the prize, but then he says, nope, it's a fraud, I used her sauce. And she's just like, you know what, fuck this, I'm tired of my family fighting, I'm, I'm off, I'm off to the airport, this is stupid, gonna go start that fancy restaurant that I've been working on for ages anyway. And it all gets a little bit love, actually, when both the families all go to the airport to try and stop her from leaving, and Hayden Christensen's like, but, but, but I want you, and, 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 and she's like, they're never gonna change. But then, it's like, okay, it's time to reveal why these families hated each other. Okay, so this is the big question of the movie being asked. Why do their papas hate each other so much? 
Well, together, they won a pizza contest and they were gonna start their own business. One of them wanted to name the business after his grandparents because they made the sauce. The other one wanted to name the business after his grandparent because they made the dough. It turned into a big stupid food fight and then they basically realized, oh, we were fighting for nothing all along. Those grandparents are gonna be getting married to each other. And they didn't even care in the first place. So re remember when I said that there's so much of this movie that you could just peel out of the film and it doesn't need to be there. This revelation basically just peels the whole movie out of existence. Like what? what is, th there's nothing. Like I get it, it's supposed to be an overblown conflict that's gotten way out of hand and the two should do the right thing. <laughs> but there was absolutely no attempt at justifying this storyline. So they all patch up their differences, they have the wedding of the two old people, the stern British chef lady is there and she's really impressed with the pizza that Emma Roberts has cooked. Emma Roberts and Hayden Christensen are now together as a couple, and the grandmother reveals she's pregnant, and everyone celebrates, and I'm just like, I'm sorry, I, I have concerns, I think there are very reasonable concerns here. You're like 80, like... That, that kid's gonna grow up with no parents. There are reasonable concerns here. And then the narration kicks back in and Hayden Christensen's like, hey, you never did tell me what was in your sauce. And then Emma Roberts is like, I did tell you, none ya. And he's like, oh yeah, none ya. Yeah, none ya business. And then it ends in the credits roll and holy fuck. So that was Little Italy and I would definitely give it an 8.5 out of 10. Now that was pure Kino. Now in all seriousness, I know why I subjected myself to this. I knew it was gonna be bad and it was bad. It didn't disappoint. It wasn't boring enough for me to be like, ah, oh, I want to switch this off, but it, it's a painful watch. Is this Hayden Christensen's worst movie? Well, put it this way, the love dynamic in Star Wars Episode II Attack of the Clones is more convincing than this is. I swear, there's so many instances where you can you, you can almost just hear the director saying, okay, now smile a little, now chuckle a little. You, you want to be happy, you want to be feeling good, you're in love, you're, you're a little bit horny. George Lucas did love better than this. There's, there's your hook, there, there's your point. Any credibility this film may have ever attempted to have is completely blown out of the window by the score of this film as well. It's got all of the makings of your crappy Hallmark Christmas movie score where the music is just about as basic for the scene as you could possibly get. It's, it's silly, it's over the top, it's obvious what the music is trying to tell you. There's nothing to remember, it's just, it's mood noise. It is like the producers took one of those composers and gave them a brief that just said, sound Italian. Because while the actors go ham on the Italian accents and the Italian lingo, the music is just so ham on the Italian sound as well. I'm not Italian, I don't know many Italian people, but like, Jesus Christ, is this film ever built on stereotypes? It doesn't stop at Italians, as I said, black and gay stereotypes, Chinese stereotype, and an Indian stereotype, who's like a main character who disappears by the second act. It's really strange. What a fucking circus this movie was. This is, this is one of those good bad movies though, where it's, it's so bad, it's got a lot of additional entertainment value because of that. I was never bored while I was watching it. It's just, you never know how this film is gonna make you roll your eyes next, and that, that's part of the surprise. And as a rom-com, it's kind of successful because it did get laughs out of me. Completely the wrong kind of laughs, but it did at least get laughs out of me, which is more than can be said for, say, Wonderlust. So if you enjoyed The Room and want something that's, yeah, you wouldn't want to watch this at the Prince Charles Theatre, but it's still pretty unintentionally terrible, check out Little Italy, the most tone-deaf rom-com I have ever seen. What do you think, guys? Comment below and discuss, and as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, why don't you head over to channelpup.net, where you can visit our blog page, Dr. Blogtopus, but you can also buy merch, such as this tasteless t-shirt. And I mean, if you insist here, guys, maybe hit subscribe, maybe hit the like button, and in the description below, are the links to my social media handles, including the Patreon, where your contribution can help me run this channel and really keep it alive. That aside, I am really grateful that you checked out this video today. Thank you so much for watching, fellow home dog. See you on another video.